Hello my dear students, uh, welcome to my channel and my name is Lalit Chauhan and I will be teaching you chemistry and I am getting lot of demands that sir please do teach redox reaction on your channel and uh, so we will begin with the redox reaction straight away. So I won't be wasting any of the time and we will begin the redox reaction. First we will begin with oxidation and reduction, the basics of that. Right? So I am beginning with that oxidation. and reduction oxidation and reduction okay so let us first understand what is oxidation and what is reduction so uh, this oxidation oxidation is actually loss of electrons loss of electrons and reduction means gain of electrons gain of electrons so if there is an element which is gaining electrons and uh, it will be reduced and if there is an element which is losing electrons it will be oxidized so let us take an example straight away you know say for example there is a reaction a and reacting with b and let's see what happens now suppose i'm assuming that a is losing two electrons to b now this will become a will become a2 plus and b will become b2 negative so I'll say that B has gained electrons. B has gained electrons and someone who will be gaining electrons will be reduced. So I can say that that B will be reduced. Also A has lost electrons. A has lost electrons or you can say it has donated the electrons. I'll say it has been oxidized. It has been oxidized. Moreover, understand one more thing. Someone who is losing electrons is getting oxidized itself but it is reducing the B. So an agent which will be reducing other one. Here A is reducing B. So I will call A as a reducing agent. So A will also be called A will also be called reducing agent. Reducing agent. An agent which will reduce others. Here A has been reducing the B. And yes in return B which is accepting the electron and it is helping the A to get oxidized to A2 plus. So B will be called oxidizing agent. Oxidizing agent. So what I am saying is that oxidizing agent is an agent which will be oxidizing the other element. While reducing agent is an agent which will be reducing the other element. Here A is reducing B to B2 negative and A itself is getting oxidized. So can I say safely that reducing agent will get oxidized itself while oxidizing agent will get reduced. Okay. Okay. Chalo. Take it. Then let's move forward. So tell you one thing if I got like say Na and Cl. So if the reaction is like say Na plus and Cl negative. So I'll say that Na has lost one electron. 2 Cl negative. So Na will be called a reducing agent because it has reduced Cl from Cl to Cl negative. Are you getting that? And Cl will be called oxidizing agent. Oxidizing agent is an agent which will oxidize the other element and itself it will be reduced. Itself it is reduced. Okay. And while reducing agent will oxidize itself will be oxidized oxidize itself is that clear to all of you i hope that's clear so chalo. now let's do some rules so let's have some rules for oxidation number understand this is very very important right? so first thing basic thing the oxidation number can have like say minimum value minimum value and maximum value okay so minimum value is given by group number minus 8 and maximum value it's given by group number itself and which group i'm talking about the groups i'm talking about are the groups which you have done in the 8th and 9th and 10th class okay so uh, let's understand how the oxidation number will be deduced so the group number one that means alkali metals they always have plus one as their oxidation number group two group two will always have plus two as their oxidation number. these are the rules group number three will always have plus three as their oxidation number but now group four group four will have minimum as minus four 
टू प्लस फोर यस नो सो इफ वी गो बैक ग्रुप नंबर माइनस एट इज द मिनिमम वैल्यू ऑफ ऑक्सीडेशन नंबर सो ग्रुप नंबर इज फोर फोर माइनस एट विल बी माइनस फोर एंड मैक्सिम विल बी ग्रुप नंबर इट सेल्फ वट इज दैट दैट विल बी फोर सो कैन आई से माइनस फोर टू प्लस फोर दिस द मिनिमम वैल्यू एंड दैट इज द मैक्सिम वैल्यू अंडरस्टैंड फ्रॉम ग्रुप वन टू ग्रुप थ्री दिस इज वॉट विच ग्रुप दिस इज बेसिकली अल्कली मेटल्स दिस इज अल्कली मेटल दिस इज वॉट अल्कलाइन अर्थ मेटल्स alkaline earth metals and group 3 is the group of boron aluminum and right? all of them will have plus 1 plus 2 and plus 3 as far as your syllabus is concerned okay now group number 5th will have minus 3 to plus 5 as the oxidation number group number 6 will have minus 2 to plus 6 as its oxidation number are you getting that okay then we have got group number 7 will have minus 1 to plus 7 as the oxidation number remember that group 7 belongs to halogens hai na group 7 belongs to halogens while while group number 6 belongs to oxygen group hai na oxygen group group number 5 is nitrogen group group number 4 is carbon group hai na okay so these are the oxidation number also the maximum oxidation number is shown by two elements ruthenium and osmium they show plus 8 as the oxidation number and that is the maximum value possible are you getting it the group numbers i'm talking about are the group numbers which we have done in 9 10 10th class okay i mean here we won't be going for group number 13 14 15 16 kind of thing this will be simple to manipulate things chalo let's do like the next group okay चलो नेक्स्ट वन इज रूल्स फॉर ऑक्सीडेशन नंबर फॉर कोवेलेंट फॉर कोवेलेंट कंपाउंड्स है ना और कोवेलेंट बॉन्ड्स आई कैन से कोवेलेंट बॉन्ड्स कोवेलेंट बॉन्ड रिमेंबर दैट सो सिंपल इट्स वेरी सिंपल से वी आर हैविंग बॉन्ड एक्स एंड वाई एंड इफ इलेक्ट्रो नेगेटिविटी ऑफ एक्स इज मोर देन द इलेक्ट्रो नेगेटिविटी ऑफ वाई इन दैट केस फॉर ईच बॉन्ड द एलिमेंट हैविंग हायर इलेक्ट्रो नेगेटिविटी विल हैव माइनस वन एंड द एलिमेंट हैविंग लेसर इलेक्ट्रो नेगेटिविटी विल बी गिवेन प्लस वन एज द चार्ज और द ऑक्सीडेशन नंबर ओके से फॉर एग्जाम्पल लेट्स टेक एन एग्जाम्पल लेट सल्फर एंड ऑक्सीजन फॉर वन बॉन्ड इज अ कोवेलेंट बॉन्ड ऑक्सीजन इज मोर इलेक्ट्रो नेगेटिव सो फॉर ईच बॉन्ड इट विल बी गेटिंग माइनस वन एंड इट विल बी गेटिंग से प्लस वन now if i have say x double bond y if electro negativity of x is more than electro negativity of y in that case for each bond it will be minus 1 so minus 1 sorry out here this will be minus 1 minus 1 for the upper bond and minus 1 and plus 1 for the lower one minus 1 minus 1 becomes minus 2 plus 1 and plus plus 1 becomes plus 2 say for example we are having s double bond o so this will be plus 2 and minus 2 for each bond electro negative element more electro negative element will get minus 1 and less electro negative will get plus 1 so there are two bonds for two bonds minus 2 and over here it will be plus 2 okay similarly we can have like say if we have x and x whose electro negativity is same if electro negativity is same for each bond we'll award zero oxidation number okay so for example we have got s and s sulfur and sulfur so since electro negativities are same so it will be like say zero and zero are you getting that it is so simple it's so simple come on, come on tell me one thing like say i'm having say x triple bond y and electro negativity of x is more than electro negativity of y what do you think will be the oxidation number of x out here it is more electro negative per bond minus 1 there are three bonds so it will be minus 3 out here and it will be plus 3 out there yes or no clear chal theek hai let's move further and let's now do the rules for the oxidation number of coordination bonds hai na chalo rules of oxidation number for coordination bond coordination bond so by the time we will be doing this thing 
we have learned what the basics of oxidation and reduction we have done the maximum and minimum value of oxidation number and we have done the rules for the oxidation number for covalent bonds now we are doing the rules for oxidation number for coordination bonds so what is the coordination bond in coordination bond a single element donates the two electrons okay the two electrons are coming from single element while in the covalent bond in the covalent bond each atom was bringing a one electron with itself are you getting that but in but in the coordinate bond in this case x is giving the two electrons to y that is called coordinate bond and over here it's very very important say first category if the electronegativity of y is more than the electronegativity of x in that case i believe that the y will keep the electrons of x because it is more electronegative so it will get minus 2 charge and it will get plus 2 charge plus 2 charge why because y has taken two electrons and x has lost two electrons since y is more electronegative it will keep the two electrons say for example sulfur donating the two electrons to oxygen this is called dative bond or coordinate bond okay since oxygen is more electronegative than sulfur then it will get minus two and this will get plus two charge okay so that are different between the coordination bond and the dative bond oxidation numbers let's say one more case one more case say x donating electrons to x in this case the electronegativities are equal in that case also the x will keep the both electron this x will keep both electrons it will be minus two and it will be plus two it will be plus two say for example sulfur donates electrons to sulfur in that case sulfur will be plus two this one it has given the two electrons it will acquire plus two charge it has gained two electrons it will acquire minus two charge is that okay okay if that is the case then okay then we can have say third one and this is important one this is important one x donating electrons to y but in this case electronegativity of x is more than electronegativity of y in this case the charge given will be zero and zero say for example i have got oxygen say for example oxygen donating the electrons to say sulfur since electro electronegativity of oxygen is more and that of sulfur is less it will be given zero and zero charge now why this is the case i'll explain that i'll explain that don't worry at all say for example i'm saying oxygen and this is supposed to say sulfur electronegativity of oxygen is more than that of electronegativity of sulfur so what i'm saying is that generally the more electronegative atom is the king is a king in the world of physical chemistry or you can say rather than king we'll assume that it is the dawn it is the dawn of the physical chemistry and lesser electronegative atom will behave like a common man will behave like common man so once suppose dawn is running away from like police so on running i mean he's carrying some a uh, bag full of money and he sees you and that he says that i'm keeping my briefcase of money with you and i'm going to come back once the police is gone i'll come back so do you think this briefcase of the money belongs to the common man he dare not touch that bag because the dawn will come and he finds even a single penny missing he'll be shooting this guy are you getting it even though the money is kept with this sulfur this money does not belongs to sulfur this belongs to oxygen oxygen simply says that i am more electronegative since you need the electrons i am sharing it with you but whenever i'll want i'll take them back these electrons they do not belong to you i'm just giving you for the sake of your own safety but whenever i want i'll take it back the bank gives you loan the money does not belong to you the money belongs to bank whenever the bank wants it can take back from you yes or no but but understand when sulfur gives oxygen electron okay in this case this is the dawn and this is the common man now when common man gives something some money to dawn the money belongs to dawn itself the money does not belong to the common man it will be permanently gone there so it will get minus two and plus two yes or no is that clear or not 
okay so these rules are clear i believe that so now let's do some questions right? let's do some questions on like say straight away on coordination bond so there are two compounds very famous compound hcn and hnc this is called hydrogen cyanide and this is called hydrogen isocyanide so remember boys and girls that while attempting these questions you will need to know the structures of the compounds you might choose mathematics but sometimes you will go wrong also so i'll suggest the best way keep on doing structures i'm saying don't do them right now and uh, keep on doing them in the respective chapters of uh, uh, inorganic chemistry and organic chemistry getting it but here i'm going to do some bare minimum requirement for redox reaction okay so diagram of hcn is h triple bond c and this n okay now let's find out the oxidation number of h c and n respectively like say for each bond covalent bond h is less electronegative carbon is more electronegative so i'll get plus one and minus one yes or no now since n is more electronegative as compared to c and there are three bonds for three bonds n will get minus three and c will get plus three yes or no and if i sum it up h will be plus one c will be plus three minus one plus two and this is minus three and what will be the oxidation number of h n and c in this compound so again let's draw some structure and if you do not draw structure no problem whatsoever we'll keep on learning slowly and slowly okay so this will be h n and c now c one of the bond is a dative bond a coordinate bond rest two are covalent bond so let's begin that how to handle that h is less electronegative so for each covalent bond it will be plus one this will be minus one out here for these two covalent bond n is more electronegative so minus two and this will be plus two but since nitrogen is more electronegative it is the dawn of the physical chemistry even though it is donating electrons it will not belong to carbon they belong to what n only so this will be zero and zero now add it up once you add it up this will be plus one this will be this total becomes what minus one minus one minus two and minus one minus three and this will be plus two so you can see that the oxidation number of hydrogen is plus one here also plus one nitrogen is minus three here also minus three carbon is plus two and it is also plus two so here the important role is of the structure so please do the structure first Chemi put chemistry first math should come later on as a support system plus but please don't put the mathematics first in these kind of questions okay so let's move now so let's do some more questions like okay uh chalo uh so first find out h2so4 who will tell me the oxidation number of sulfur in h2so4 for that i mean you guys can choose mathematics also but i'll suggest do the structure because not every time you will be getting the right answer okay say i mean if you do the mathematics i'll be doing that later on but sulfur oh oh and dative bond o and dative bond o so this is the structure of h2 the four now let's see over here for this covalent bond oxygen is more electronegative minus one plus one this is a dative bond less electronegative common man has given the electrons to the dawn dawn will keep it minus 2 and this will be plus 2 for this covalent bond minus 1 plus 1 and minus 2 and plus 2 again this is the dative bond so this becomes the oxidation number of sulfur how much plus 2 plus 1 plus 3 and plus 2 plus 5 and 1 plus 6 so plus 6 is the oxidation number of sulfur in h2so4 we are taking the help of structure let's take h2s2o3 okay h2 s2 o3 here the structure is simple same is structure but but with one oxygen being replaced by sulfur and this is it this is it okay so keep on doing the practice of the structures you will not come across any problem for a long long time okay so come over here again for this single bond covalent bond minus one plus one now these two are having same electronegativity so if sulfur gives the electrons to this sulfur it will keep it and it will become plus two out here minus one plus one plus two and minus two 
for data bond. Now see that thing. This is what? This is plus 6. And this one, this sulfur is what? Minus 2. So there are two different sulfurs. Right? One sulfur having plus 6, other having minus 2. Okay. Now if they ask you average, average oxidation number of sulfur will be how much? Come on. Bolo. It will be plus 6 and minus 2 divided by 2 sulfur atoms. That's called average. So this will be what? It will be plus 4 and divided by 2, 2, plus 2. That is the oxidation number of average oxidation number of sulfur in this entire compound. Okay. So let's do some more examples. Let's do some more example. Uh, the next example, let's take C3O2. This is called carbon suboxide. Carbon suboxide. In all these compounds, you will need to know the structure. Right? So the structure is C double bond, C double bond, C double bond O and one more O. Now see that oxygen is more electronegative. All of them are covalent bond for two bonds minus two and it will be plus two. Carbon carbon zero zero carbon carbon zero zero and carbon oxygen again plus two and minus two. So if they ask you what is the average average oxidation state of carbon. So it will be like what total charge plus two and zero and again plus two. Total carbon atoms 1, 2, 3, 3. Total becomes plus 4 by 3. So average oxidation state of carbon is plus 4 by 3. While the individual oxidation state is what? Plus 2, 0 and plus 2. Getting that? Chalo. Okay, we'll do one more example. So let's have Br3O8. Br3O8. So let's do the structure of this thing. Br br and br and we will be having oxygen 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 eight of them we'll be having eight of them okay try to distribute as much as possible equally and here oxygen and here oxygen yes or no so for this thing it will be minus two minus two minus two and plus two plus two plus two and minus two Minus, all of them are data bonds, right? so minus 2, plus 2, minus 2 and again plus 2, here minus 2, plus 2, minus 2, plus 2, minus 2 and plus 2, total becomes this one plus 6, plus 4 and plus 6, so average oxidation state of bromine will be what, plus 6, plus 4 and plus 6, divided by what, 3, 16 by 3, this will be plus 16 by 3. Three. So this is how you are going to handle the average oxidation number or average oxidation state. I hope that these examples will make it imply clear. Okay. Now let's move further and let's do few more rules. Right? Let's do few more rules. Few more rules for oxidation state or you can say oxidation number. Okay. These are very important. The first one is that oxidation state of elements of elements in their free state in their free state is taken as zero what do you mean by free state their naturally occurring state or in which they are not bonded for example sodium calcium they are not bonded to anything h2 is its natural state okay o2 n2 are you getting that in all these iron you can take iron as fe their natural state or their unbounded free state over here the oxidation state will be zero for all of them okay they are not losing electron they are not gaining electrons if you are not losing electron you are not gaining electrons there is no chance you can have a charge on yourself and if there is no charge there is no oxidation state as well okay Okay, second one, a very important one, and it says that oxidation state of elements in the alloys, in the alloys is also zero. Now, what is an alloy? Alloy is a mixture of compounds. When you mix something, there is no real formation of the bond. That means electrons are not transferred. Simply you are mixing the elements. Say for example, if I say sodium amalgam, sodium amalgam 
in sodium amalgam it is sodium and mercury the mercury compounds with the metals are called sodium amalgam over here there is no loss of electron no gain of electron so oxidation number of oxygen na is also zero and that of mercury is also zero yes or no let's take uh, bronze let's take bronze bronze is made up of basically copper and tin but since there is no loss and gain of electrons the oxidation state will be zero and zero again let's take brass brass is one more example brass is basically made up of copper and it is made up of what zinc again zero and zero oxidation number yes or no are you getting that so oxidation number of elements in the alloys is taken as zero the reason there is no actual exchange of electrons okay now let's come to the third point very important sum of oxidation number sum of oxidation number or oxygen state in a neutral compound in a neutral compound compound or or molecule or molecule is equal to zero sum of oxidation number of all the elements in the neutral compound or the molecule is zero sum of oxidation number of all atoms of all atoms in a neutral compound or a molecule is, is equal to zero say for example uh, what we can take uh, we can take uh, like uh, we can take so2 we can take SO2. You know? So if I take SO2 and I want to find out the oxidation number of sulfur. So let's take this as X and each oxygen will have like say minus 2 at this oxidation number. So X minus of 2 into 2 will be 0. This is how we are going to handle that stuff. You know? So X will be equal to plus 4. So oxidation number of sulfur will be equal to what? Plus 2. We can also say that KMnO4, KMnO4. So if I add all the oxidation state of potassium, manganese and oxygen, they will be equal to what? Zero. How? We'll do it in short while. But understand, whenever we are handling a neutral molecule or a compound, neutral compound, the sum of the oxidation state of all the atoms will be equal to zero. So over here, say, let's have like next one. So sum of oxidation state of all atoms of all atoms in an ion in an ion is equal to charge on the ion is equal to charge on the ion okay say for example if i got sulfate so4 2 negative in that case i am assuming that sulfur is say x oxygen is one oxygen is minus 2 so minus 2 into 4 will be equal to what minus 2 the sum of all the oxidation state is equal to charge on the ion yes or no let's say maybe we are having po4 3 negative so let's say the oxidation state of phosphorus is what x each oxygen is what minus 2 there are four of them so minus 2 into 4 should be equal to what charge on the ion minus of 3 yes or no we'll solve it later on but this is how we are going to do the questions for the ions next one equally important fifth one generally generally the oxidation state of hydrogen is taken as plus one but but in metal hydrides in metal hydrides its oxidation oxidation state is taken as minus one the reason being electronegativity of hydrogen is more than the electronegativity of most of the metals yes or no say for example if i say nah sodium hydride in this case this will be given plus one and this will be given minus one moreover let me be very clear the oxidation state oxygen number of elements of group 1 group 2 and group 3 is always plus 1 plus 2 and plus 3 always will not compromise with those rules okay so let's say calcium hydride CH2 CAH2 are you getting that so for each bond like say we can have sorry it up minus 1 there will be plus 1 minus 1 and plus 1 so calcium becomes what plus 2 I told you calcium belongs to group number 2 and for group number 2 the oxidation number will be always plus 2 yes or no this becomes plus 2 and this is minus 1 and minus 1 in case of metal hydrides otherwise in general it will be plus 1 always you know? for example if I say H 
and say n bond it will be plus 1 and it will be minus 1 okay Chalo. next thing uh, this one is oxidation number of oxygen oxygen is generally is generally how much but is minus 2 is minus 2 but 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 in case of in case of first one peroxides peroxides in case of peroxide for example h2o2 let's see that the structure h o o and h so for each bond plus 1 minus 1 because oxygen is more electronegative o o bond same electronegativity covalent bond 0 and 0 and for this one minus 1 and plus 1 so you can see the oxidation number of oxygen in peroxide is what minus 1 is equal to minus 1 let's take one more example like say na2o2 sodium peroxide again the same structure na o o and na is that clear now this will be plus 1 minus 1 0 0 plus 1 and minus 1 oxygen being more electronegative yes or no so this will be minus 1 this will be minus 1 so oxidation number of oxygen in the peroxide says always minus 1 let's take one more example of peroxide it is called barium peroxide BaO2 and like say the structure will be BaO O and this is O for this bond plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 and for this bond 0 0 is that clear now so barium becomes plus 2 and the condition is satisfied I told you that for group number 2 plus 2 will be the oxidation state always and this becomes minus 1 this also becomes minus 1 okay also also second case is there for this one second case in case of in case of superoxides in case of superoxides for example like ko2 ko2 keep in mind group number one element are always found in plus one oxidation state in any compound so this k will be plus one plus one and let us assume the oxidation state of oxygen is x how many oxygen are there two so 2x i told you the rule number four what is that sum of oxidation number of all the atoms in a neutral molecule or a compound is equal to zero so 2x will be equal to plus one x will be equal to plus sorry sorry my mistake minus one minus one by two so oxidation number of oxygen in superoxide is actually minus one by two so we have to keep these things in mind very carefully okay clear to all of you Chalo. now next move and over here next one and last one oxidation number of halogens of halogens is generally generally and is equal to minus one and but but in case of interhalogen compounds interhalogen compounds and you will read that in detail in inorganic chemistry they may differ for example uh, cl is normally like say minus one but in clf3 it will be cl f f and say f so each bond minus one plus one minus one plus one minus one and plus one so out here chlorine is plus three overall chlorine is plus three fluorine is most negative it will be always minus one okay but chlorine is here plus three similarly we can have i'll go in the next page say we can have i f say i f seven so iodine will have like say f f f f and one more f right? so for each fluorine iodine will be how much better plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one and plus one and plus one total becomes plus seven plus seven so iodine generally is minus one but out here it is plus one okay and not only in interhalogen compound but in case of oxy acids also for the case of oxy acids and now what are oxy acids what are oxy acids the acids which contain oxygen you know like say hclo 
let's say HClO2 and let's say HClO3. So again here you need to know the structure if possible. Okay, otherwise we can do it like say it will be plus one. Hydrogen is generally plus one. Chlorine X, I am assuming. Oxygen is more electronegative than chlorine. Each oxygen is what in general? Minus two. Should be equal to what? Zero. So X will be equal to what? Plus one. Yes or no? Over here. H will be plus one. Chlorine will be X and two oxygen will be minus four. Each oxygen is minus 2. So 2 will be 2 into minus 2. Minus 4 equal to 0. Sum of oxidation number of all the elements in a neutral compound should be equal to 0. So X will be equal to plus 3. So chlorine is having plus 3, plus 1 here in the oxy acid. Out here, again, it will be plus 1. X and minus 6 is equal to 0. X will be equal to plus 5. Yes or no, beta? Are you all getting that? And there is one more acid left of this thing that is called HClO4. HClO4 and this will be like again plus 1 X and minus 8 for oxygen equal to 0. X will be equal to plus 7. So this is the basic which is required to handle the coming questions. Okay. So let's try that. Let's try that now. Okay. now. But remember that. Remember one very important thing that please go with the structures. Don't blindly trust the mathematics you might go wrong for example for example cro5 chromium pentoxide what is the oxidation number of chromium now see that stuff if you do mathematics x chromium is x suppose say each oxygen is minus 2 so minus 2 into 5 there are 5 of them so this is this is neutral it should be equal to 0 so x will be plus 10 but this is wrong because maximum allowable oxidation state is how much plus 8 plus 8. Let me introduce a very smart trick that if the mathematical value is coming more than the maximum possible value possible for a given element you know, that means it must contain a peroxide linkage. It must contain a peroxide linkage. Say, let's do the structure now. So CrO5 the structure is actually Cr double bond O O O and O and O and this one. It is called a butterfly structure and again each bond minus one plus one minus one sorry plus one minus one two bonds minus two plus two single bond minus one plus one minus one and plus one. So if you add them up you will get this as what plus six which is allowable for chromium. So oxidation state of chromium in CrO5 is not plus 10 it is plus six. You are getting basically plus 10 because of mathematics. You missed chemistry. Don't miss chemistry. Keep chemistry in front. Okay. Don't blindly trust this mathematics. Trust the structures. Okay. Let's say Asha, I told you one more thing. I told you that if the mathematical value is coming more than the allowable value that means it must contain a proxy linkage out here peroxy linkage a peroxy linkage what is the peroxy linkage OO linkage is called peroxy linkage is that clear so let's have some more example some more example let's say H2SO5 this is called Caro's acid Caro's acid so if you go with the mathematics see that plus 2 for each hydrogen plus 1 there are 2 of them sulfur I am assuming X each oxygen will be minus 2 and there are 5 of them and this is neutral should be equal to 0 so plus 2 plus X minus 10 equal to 0 X will be equal to plus 8 plus 8 but since sulfur since sulfur belongs to which group group number 6 so maximum maximum oxidation number can be plus 6 only it is coming plus 8 that means something is wrong we have missed chemistry out here for the sake of structures enough so let's see the structure of h2so5 the structure is s o dt bond o oh o and o and h also remember when the mathematical value is coming more than the allowable value it must contain a proxy linkage this is the peroxy linkage o oh, oh. and let's see minus 2 plus 2 minus 1 plus 1 minus 2 plus 2 minus 1 and plus 1 let's see that's up it will be plus 6 add them up you'll get plus 6 so if 
if the coming value is more than the maximum allowable value, this will not be the answer. Answer will be the maximum allowable value always. Yes or no? So that is it. So we are having the maximum possible value of sulfur is what? Plus 6. So it will be plus 6 if mathematics is giving you a way beyond the answer. Let's take one more example. Let's take one more example. H2 S2 O8. Okay. So o out here, if you do mathematics, you will get plus 2 plus 2x minus 16 equal to 0, 2x equal to plus 14. See that, x equal to plus 7. Again, this is impossible because maximum value possible for sulfur is what? Plus 6. That means something is wrong out here. We have missed chemistry, never missed the chemistry. So the structure of this will be S dt bond O, dt bond O, OH, OH, O, OS. This is a structure and this you will be learning in the inorganic chemistry as well. There is a data bond, sorry, there is a peroxy linkage. Whenever the mathematical value is more than the maximum possible value, there will always be a peroxy linkage. Here is the peroxy linkage and answer will always be the maximum possible value. So sulfur will be is plus 6. Let's check. Let's check. Minus 1, plus 1, minus 2, plus 2. Minus 1, plus 1, minus, sorry, minus 1, or minus 2. It is a dative bond. It is a dative bond. Minus 2 and plus 2. This is what? Plus 6. Are you getting that? And since this is also same, symmetrical, this will also be plus 6. Yes or no? Is that clear? So I hope. Hello. So let's do some more questions. Right? Say we are having MnO, MnO2, we are having MnO4 negative. So let's see how to find out the oxidation number of Mn manganese in these compounds. Let's begin that. So let's Mn be say X. Oxygen in general is how much? Minus 2 is equal to 0. It's a neutral compound. So X will be equal to plus 2. Yes or no? Now come over here. One more time. Mn let it be X. Oxygen is minus 2. There are two of them. So minus 2 into 2 will be equal to what? 0. It's a neutral compound. X is equal to plus 4. So plus 4 is the oxidation number of Mn. Come over here, x minus 2 into 8. This is the charge molecule and the sum of the oxidation state should be equal to what? Charge on it. How much charge? Minus 1. So x minus 8 will be equal to minus 1. So x will be equal to what? Plus 7. So in this compound, in this ion, Mn has oxidation number of plus 7. Okay. Let's quickly do some more questions. You know? Let's say we are having CaO, CaO. Cl2. This is called actually bleaching powder. It's a very important question. They ask you a question that in which of the following compound chlorine exists in two different oxidation state. This is this compound bleaching powder and let's see that how it exists CaO, Cl and this is also Cl. So for each bond plus one minus one oxygen is more electronegative and out here calcium is plus one. This is minus 1 for this bond minus 1 and plus 1 so calcium goes to plus 2 chlorine minus 1 and this chlorine plus 1 oxygen is what minus 2 so in this compound chlorine exists in what plus 1 and minus 1 oxidation state this all comes by knowing the structure so don't underestimate the power of structures okay boys and girls come on okay so let's say we are having ch4 c H3 Cl, CH2 Cl2 and CH Cl3. Let's find out the oxidation number of carbon in all these compounds. So carbon being more electronegative, let's say X. 1H will be plus 1, 4 of them, plus 4. Should be equal to what? 0. It's a neutral compound. So X will be equal to what? Minus 4. So carbon is minus 4 over here. How about this one? X plus 3 for hydrogen and chlorine will be minus 1 equal to 0 x equal to minus 2 please be careful over here x hydrogen is plus 1 there are two of them so plus 2 chlorine minus 1 in general it is 2 minus 2 equal to 0 x equals to 0 and out here x plus 1 minus 3 equals to 0 yes or no x will be equal to plus 2 this is how we are going to handle these kind of questions okay Let's say we are having MN3O4. MN3O4. Chalo, who will tell me the oxidation number of MN? The average one basically. So there are three MN. 
3x minus of 4 into 2 equal to what? 0. 3x equal to plus 8. x will be plus 8 by 3. Yes or no boys and girls? Is that clear or not? Okay. Okay. Chalo. There is compound called Fe 0 0.940. Fe.940. Find out the oxidation number of iron. This is a non stoichiometric compound. It doesn't matter. We'll find it out. So there is oxygen how much? 1. So 0.94x. 1 oxygen is what? Minus 2 equal to what? 0. So 0.94x will be equal to what? Plus 2 x and x will be equal to what plus 2 upon 0.94 simplify that this can be like say 200 upon 94 multiply up and down by 100 will that be clear okay let's have like, like say one more example uh, let us have what i can say uh, ki3 ki3 i told you that Potassium will always be plus 1. Group 1, group 2, group 3 elements will always be in plus 1, plus 2 and plus 3 oxidation state. Okay. Respectively. So plus 1 and iodine let us suppose it is x. So 3x is equal to 0. So 3x will be equal to minus 1. x will be minus 1 by 3. A similar compound is hydrazoic acid. N3H is called hydrazoic acid. So what is the oxidation number of N out here? Come on. So let's say 1N is say x. So 3x and plus 1, h is general plus 1 equal to what? 0. So 3x will be equal to what? Minus 1, x will be minus 1 by 3. So we have practiced some sufficient number of questions. Eh, na? You guys keep on doing your modules and we will try to discuss the problems, the doubts in the next class as well.